So today we're going to do uh, lessons uh, 15 and 16. Uh, and a discussion of bhakti yoga, uh, the yoga of uh, devotion. Just uh, you know, yet another um, backward bending um, asana. So you're not really breathing in and out, right? That's right. No. Again, it's good for it uh, fully expands the lungs, right? Because of the pressure on the stomach when you inhale, mm. it just uh, opens all the uh, alveoli, you know, for the lungs. Mm. And as much about the benefits too. Plus, it massages helps massage the uh, you know the internal organs here because mm. of the extra pressure. Um, Again, basically, I, I kind of alternate between the different backward bending poses. You know, one day you do camel, one day you do bow, one day you do you know locust and cobra. You know, just uh, very low. Otherwise, there's too many asanas that will be piling up, eh? The next one, in lesson 16, is the uh, shoulder stand, uh, sarvadasana. So the shoulder stand is a very is a very critical one, right? I mean, it's um, one of the most important asanas actually, and it's one of those asanas that uh, you know you pretty much do every day, right? Um, it uh, again, there's again several flavors of asanas: uh, forward bending asanas, um, there's uh, backward bending asanas, and then this actually falls into the category of uh, inverted asanas, where you have your legs up. So there's several like shavasana is one of them. Right? And then uh, Sarvadasana, 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 and um, headstand is the other one. And then there's a few others. Then there's also um, twisting asanas, right? And again, this also qualifies as, a, as the, the fifth type of balance asanas that require you to, uh, you know, concentrate on your balance, right? And this is very beneficial to to invert the body, right? I mean, it drains all the, uh, the blood out of your legs, otherwise your legs, the blood gets, kind of sits there for you know, too long without circulating to the rest of the body. So it's actually quite important to actually do this every day to get the blood out of the legs and to circulate and fresh blood will come back uh, you know, to the legs. This particular asana has also an effect on the uh, thyroid gland to help uh, you know, the, the hormone balance, right? to help keep all your hormones in balance, the endocrine system. And also there's a, there's a chakra here, there should be and it, uh, and it gently stimulates that chakra as well. So there's lots of benefits. There's a huge list of benefits. I'm just touching on them briefly, but uh, there's a huge list of benefits from this asana. So again, I recommend that everybody does it uh, you know, on a daily basis, right? Anyways, I'll demonstrate, you can watch. Watch first while I demonstrate, and then you can give it a try afterwards. Right? So again, the key thing with any asana is to be, to be in control, do it slowly and in control, right? So it's pretty straightforward, you just bring your feet up and, you know, straight, so, yes, up, and just keep going up onto your shoulders, right, and then you straighten out your body, you get to the top, 
right? So again, you may need to put your hands here to uh, support your back if you can't get your back straight, right? Um, there's other variations too, right? I mean, once you get uh, better at it, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, try bringing your arms up all together and just balance your shoulders by themselves, right? Like that. Generally, you do this for about uh, you know 30 seconds to a minute or so is plenty, but you can do it like a couple minutes if you want. But I would say no more than like two or three minutes, right? And then you just come out of it the same way you went into it, right? Just very slowly and uh, with control. Yourself, though, eh? I mean, try to be, uh, make sure you stay in control. Yeah? That's good. Yeah? And then just breathe, breathe normally, right? Mm -hmm. And then whenever you feel uh, you've had enough, you just uh, come back down slowly. It's interesting actually, there's like lots of uh, asanas that you can, that they do, you know, just normally and then they do it like, again, from the lotus posture. Again, they actually say the benefits are in fact not as good because the, the blood won't drain from your legs like this, but uh, just for completeness, I'll, uh, I'll just demonstrate this as well. Alright, so again, yeah, same thing. You lie down, right? You just come up. Alright, you try to straighten your legs up, like that. I have the feeling that, uh, well, actually, I don't know, I won't even, I won't even bother speculating why they would come up with this one. But, uh, you know, I can probably just to increase flexibility, I'm guessing, basically, right? To just continue to increase your flexibility within this asana, right? From Padmasana, so your legs, to combine the leg flexibility, right? So, uh, next they have uh, Ashwini Mudra. Actually, let's reset the camera. Move my mat back. Um, so next is uh, Ashwini Mudra. That is, um, you know, contracting the muscles of the anus, right? So again, um, we'll talk about it a bit more when I get to that book. Okay, actually, I'll just uh, I'll skip it for now. So actually, the pranayama practice is actually um, it's the same as what I showed last uh, last month. Anyone trying a jaladhara band with uh, with their pranayama? Not shown them yet. Anyone trying that? Remember the, the neck lock, right? When you, oh. you inhale, right? Then you hold your neck lock. Right. Remember that I showed you that no. last month? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> remember? Oh, that's right, you missed. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah? I haven't, I haven't you ever tried it? No. Okay, so actually, uh, I believe last month I showed you doing the, the neck lock after the inhalation and holding the breath, you do neck lock. And then the exhalation, you hold the breath out. Mm -hmm. And I also showed the neck lock, but actually, you should actually do one month uh, 
I believe it says here even there. I'll just read it specifically. At pranayam, right? So again, the ratio is still the same, right? To 1, 8, 6, 2. Right? So inhale for 4, hold for 32, exhale 24, hold the breath out for uh, 8. Right? And uh, so combined with uh, Jalada Harvand, the, the neck lock. Uh, so then it says, uh, okay, so the duration for inner retention is eight. It is during this period that you should practice Jaladara Band. At this stage, don't attempt to do Jaladara Band with ultra retention of breath. That comes, that comes actually this month. So for one month, whenever you get to the stage, you can do Jaladara Band. So spend about one month doing it only on the inhalation. So you inhale, do the apply the band, and then you exhale. Hold the breath out, don't do it, and then inhale again, hold it. The second month, is, uh, the second month you can actually do it on both inhalation and exhalation. Right? <coughs> Finally, practice, so new practice, retain the same ratio. Now try to perform Jalantar band with both outer and inner retention. Okay? So, uh, so that's what uh, we'll do today. Actually, it's the same I showed last month, but uh, we'll do it again today. So, anyways, whatever level you're at for uh, Navi Shodhana, you can uh, you can just do that. Whatever ratio you're at, and uh, again, you should be uh, probably a retention of about 24 at least. You should be holding for about 24 seconds at least before you start to introduce the uh, Jalantara Band right into the practice. Anyways, we'll go for about uh, five minutes or so. So again. Uh, Everyone knows not to show them there, so just go at your own pace for about five minutes. Again, just do a few rounds, you know, without any retention, and then add retention. I'm counting.
finish your last round. So the, um, so the last thing we'll talk about from this book is um, Amarovi. Anybody uh, know what that is? <laughs> this was a big discussion at work because we work with natural health products, right? Oh, yeah. So okay. all these traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, so we had a discussion about it. And I was telling them that there is a purpose, but then I they understood and I said, no, for, no point of discussion <laughs> yeah. further. <laughs> Yes, so uh, I believe this is the, uh, this is the last of the, uh, you know, kind of uh, cleaning, you know, cleansing, purification type uh, practices. Um, so again, if you had a, a hard time with the other ones, um, this one's probably uh, the most difficult to, uh, to grasp. Mm -hmm. But the practice is um, uh, drinking your own urine, basically. <laughs> So, uh, so again, from a scientific point of view, though, I mean, um, you can actually see that urine actually is uh, very clean. It's actually clean. There's like no bacteria. Nothing. It's actually sterile, and it's even um, you know antiseptic. You know, you can use it too. Uh, he actually uh, says right here, uh, if you have a cut, a graze, a sore, you know, any kind of open wound, uh, you can use urine to disinfect the wound. Actually, right? Yeah. Um, not only does it keep the wound clean, clean and free from infection. Right, um, but it also seems to aid in the speed of healing. Right, if you suffer from boils, pimples, you know, fungus infections, athlete's foot, you know, anything like that, you can just take some urine and uh, and put it on there. Right, and it'll cure it pretty quick. Um, so that's the kind of the external practice. Right, uh, again, you can look it up on the internet. Uh, there's like world conferences. It's actually quite uh, heavily studied and practiced. Uh, urine therapy, you can look it up. Um, mm -hmm. Amarillo really doesn't have much of a, any hits, but uh, urine therapy has a lot of hits. Right, mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. That's right. The, the prime minister of India, mm -hmm. right? He uh, he publicly declared to the country that uh, you know, everyone should uh, should practice this, right? Yeah. So the uh, <coughs> so the internal therapy is of course is drinking it basically uh, first thing in the morning. They say that after a good night's sleep, the urine that you produce first thing in the morning is, has the most uh, beneficial uh, contents, right? Um, so, uh, so here, there's a long list of diseases which can be treated with urine, you know, uh, diabetes, kidney diseases, heart ailments, high blood pressure, edema, malaria, any type of fever, colds, asthma, uh, menstrual disorders, piles, uh, intestinal diseases, cancer, you know, I mean, just pretty much anything, right? Urine will cure pretty much anything. Um, I'll send you a link to uh, Martha Christie. She's, a, she's an American, actually, and, uh, you know, she had many severe health problems for, like, many years, right? And she tried all of the alternative practices, all of the medical practices, and nothing worked for her until she tried this, and this thing just, just cured her like nothing else could after suffering for, like, 20 years or something, which severe conditions in the hospital continuously, and, uh, you know, and it was quite a fascinating story to read, you know? So, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll send that to you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in this book, uh, with all these practices, um, uh, I haven't noticed much emphasis on the eating habits. It all depends on the whole mm -hmm. thing, like how pure we eat mm -hmm. and its effect, and then because whatever we eat or drink will affect even That's right. you exactly. as well. Yes. So, uh, did you notice, did I miss anything about the food um, habits? Which yeah, there's a, there's a couple chapters in the beginner course, right, about uh, diet and uh, vegetarianism, right? Okay. Again, very, very basic, just eating, you know, fresh, natural food, basically, you know, avoid processed food, you know, uh, and that's about it, right? It's pretty simple. Uh, if you want to get into diet in detail, though, um, Ayurveda, Ayurveda will cover diet in a, in a great deal of detail. So, uh, again, it's a little bit... Uh, outside the scope of this course, but uh, yes, uh, um, again, uh, you know, like uh, Perfect Health, right? You, you've read that one, right? D 
deeper yeah. chakras, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it yeah. sort of explains how you look at your body type, you examine your own, you know, your own body type, and uh, you, you tailor your diet specifically for that body type. But for this mm. particular uh, chapter, mm. for mm. Amarul, if you try, mm. is it emphasis to to improve a diet style before trying it? Uh, yes, they do kind of recommend that, right? So. Uh, Basically, just simple food, right? Uh, and again, vegetarian food is recommended, right? Mm, that's about it, you know. Just uh, uh, unprocessed, you know, fairly natural, homemade food, essentially, and uh, you know, and vegetarian, ideally, right? Okay. So uh, yeah, they give these specific steps. Uh, you could actually fast on your urine if you if you have like some severe ailment. I've read about people doing that as well. You know, where you just um, you know, forty days. You just uh, you drink only your urine up continuously, right? And you can cure almost anything. Like uh, I read one case of somebody curing tuberculosis by doing that, right? So, uh, again, actually, they also say avoid some of the uh, so processed food, the meat. Uh, you know, reduce your salt and spices, uh, and avoid you know starch and heavy food as well, right? And stick mostly to fruits and vegetables, essentially, mm -hmm. right? If you want to get the, the most benefits. Um, actually, Swami Arundhati, um, though, I asked her about this once too, about uh, the diet, and she sort of said that, uh, you know, uh, they just kind of let it happen naturally. Like, as you, you do the practice, just, you know, keep your normal diet, do the practice, and you'll automatically change your diet, right? It'll be like an automatic process, kind of what I've sort of emphasized all along. You know, if you do these practices, your diet will automatically be, become correct. Whatever is perfect for you, again, you should know that every person has a different diet which is perfect for them. What's good for one person may not be good for somebody else, right? So you have to kind of figure out for yourself what is the perfect diet for yourself, right? And you'll naturally go to that as you do these practices. Um, so again, uh, early morning, right? You drink the intermediate portion of the urine, right? So you, uh, you urinate a bit, right, for a couple seconds, then you hold the flow, you stop it, you contract the urinary muscles and stop the flow, you know, get your cup. Again, they say, like, it um, should be consumed from, like, an earthen, earthen vessel or a copper vessel. Uh, basically, any kind of, uh, you know, just don't use plastic, basically, but light glass is fine, you know, stainless steel, you know, any kind of, like, uh, you know, natural container of some sort. And then you collect the middle portion. So, again, you stop the flow again just before you're, you're done, right, and then you, uh, Keep, keep your glass to the side, finish off, finish urinating another few seconds, whatever's left, and then you, uh, you drink down the, uh, the stuff you collected. <laughs> again, they get various recommendations, right? I mean, you can try again. Uh, again, we've been raised with a severe mental block towards our urine. We've been told our whole life that it's something dirty, you have to like stay away from it, you shouldn't be coming anywhere close to it, right? You should like have to wash yourself if it comes, if it touches you anywhere, right? <laughs> So that's probably the biggest problem is coming over the, the mental block for, uh, for doing this practice. But, uh, you know, again, you can try, so they recommend you try like externally first, right? Try just, you know, I don't know, flat, like, okay, you know, if you have a boiler or something, just try putting it on your boiler, pimpler, if you have, you know, some kind of a problem. Can just, just try and see. Basically, the way that works is you, you let it sit for like, you know, five or ten minutes on your skin and then you shower afterwards, right? And just, you know, clean yourself normally and then uh, see what happens, right? <laughs> Mm. Right, again, you can uh, drink it throughout the day. Probably just morning is plenty though. You can gargle with it for a sore throat, right? You can actually do uh, gel nati with urine instead of water, right? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of possibilities. <laughs> I've, uh, I've tried it all, actually. I've tried everything, so just to make, just to see what it's like, right? Um, so that's it. That's it for this book. So we're into the month two practices, which is for the, the next chakra. So last month we did uh, the practices for awakening the Ajna chakra. So between the Eyebrows are actually in the main chakra is actually in the center of your head, the top of your spine, kind of in the center of your head. Um, so uh, again, if you've been doing the Anulam Vulam Pranashuddhi, Tratak, and uh, Shambhavi Mudra, right, with the Om chanting, if you've been practicing those for the last month, you should have you know, awakened the uh, you know, Anshan chakra by now, right? 
You should actually not only feel here between your eyebrows, but you should be able to start to feel it in the center of your head as well, right? Uh, if you haven't or yet awakened uh, those, uh, you know, the Arjuna Chakra, you should continue with those practices. At least five minutes of, you know, each one, right? Anulom, Pulom, Kanashiddhi, five minutes of Tratak, and then five minutes of uh, Om Chanting with, uh, you know, Shambhavi Mudra and Om Chanting, right? Um, then after that, you can do the practices for Muladhar Chakra. So now we move from the, uh, the top chakra to the, to the base of the spine, right? The actually, Muladhar even, well, I'll, I'll describe it now in, in detail, right? So this chakra, what's interesting about this chakra is now, uh, so Ajahn Chakra, as we said last week, doesn't have to be contained in the uh, samskaras or vasanas, right? So when you wake in the Ajahn Chakra, there's no like, um, you know, strange things that happen, let me put it that way. <laughs> Muladhara Chakra is, um, is most famous for being the, uh, the seat of uh, sexual desire, right? So your sexual uh, cravings come from Muladhara Chakra. So when that chakra is fully awakened and purified, actually, you will actually eliminate uh, sexual desire and you'll, you know, become celibate, essentially, right? Just like celibacy will become very easy, you know, for someone who's purified their uh, Muladhara chakra, right? Um, oh, actually, one more thing before I forget is, uh, so there's one more very important point about Amaroli that he mentions in here, which I didn't actually haven't read anywhere else except in here. Uh, so the word uh, Amaroli means immortal. And through this practice, one is free from many diseases. Practicing Amaroli over a prolonged period also produces a hormone known as prostaglandin, which destroys the ova and prevents conception from taking place. Right, so in women, right? So uh, if you do this over a long time, period of time, you'll actually will no longer be able to have children, in fact. <laughs> so you should actually, again, with a lot of this stuff, like searching for enlightenment is basically something you do when you're kind of finished with the, you know, you're done having your kids and you're kind of looking for what's the next thing in my life, right? So, but if you do plan to have kids still, probably avoid uh, Amaroli, right? <laughs> okay. That's okay, we're done. <laughs> yeah. So again, like he says, you like, can cure all diseases and everything else, though, right? I mean, the benefits are enormous, in fact, from that practice. Um, so yes, so Muladhara Chakra is basically the uh, seat of sexual desire. And again, there's a big discussion of that, uh, you know, uh, in the section on uh, whatever, chapter 18, Muladhara Chakra in here. You can read that. And then the practices are on um, 29. So, uh, so, so Muladhara Chakra and Swadhisthana Chakra are almost in the same location. Right? So Swadhisthana Chakra is at the pubic bone. Um, on the, the shastrams in the front and at the tailbone at the back, Swadhisthana Chakra. So this month we're going to focus on Muladhara Chakra. So the first thing we'll talk about is the location of it. Um, so again, the location is different in men and women, right? Uh, again, uh, you know, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the, uh, the sex sexual organs a bit, so, uh, you know, in a PG discussion, if given, but for anybody on the video. Um, so they have, a, uh, they have a diagram here, it's actually on the, the PDF on the website too, right? The female anatomy, the male anatomy, and where the points are, right? So, um, so the three spiritual points you need to concentrate, so that the, uh, the anal, uh, right, the opening of the anus is one point, so the Shuni Mudra activates that one. Again, this is, will help activate uh, Swadhisthana Chakra, right at the tailbone, which is just, just back here at the tailbone. Um, so again, women, it's the same place. Muladhar chakra in men is just, uh, you know, between, between the, uh, you know, the, the penis and the anus, right there, just a point just in between, right? That's where Muladhar chakra is in men. In women, from the vagina up to the, uh, the womb, just at the opening of the womb, actually, is where the Muladhar chakra is in women, right? And then the urinary uh, area, like, so, so for men, just uh, at the top of the, at the pubic bone, at the, just uh, above the penis is where uh, the Swadhisthana Shastram is. And for women, it's in the, uh, the urinary tract, just, just in front of the kidneys, right? So, uh, so, again, you need to contract each of these muscles. So, like, when you do, if you, you practice, you know, holding back the flow of urine, right, you basically have to contract, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Vajoli Mudra, that's the, the first point in the urinary tract. Uh, and then, uh, 
So again, the first thing you do is actually to again to kind of isolate these three sets of muscles, right? So the, the practice is just you know a swinging mudra, so like squeezing the anal, anal muscles. So then try to squeeze them in isolation. So don't cause, don't contract any of the other muscles in the, the pelvic floor area. Just do the anal muscles, right? And then try to do just the urinary muscles without the without any other muscles. And then the idea is to isolate the the, the muscles around the muladhara chakra. So again, the, the vaginal muscles in women, and for men it's the uh, perineum, right? So again, one thing that can help you do this is uh, to actually just use, to just touch the point with your finger, right? So again, usually in the bathroom, like when I started doing this, you know, just in the bathroom, you know, you just, um, so for men, I'll read the description for men first, right? So you just press one finger on the perineum right in that point there, right? And then you, at the same time, you try to contract the muscles. So try to get a feel of the muscle contracting, right? To try to isolate so your mind can know where that muscle is and you can just con be able to, like, contract it, right? Uh, yeah. And that's about it for men. Men is pretty simple because again, it's pretty close to the you know the outside of the body. For women, it's a bit more difficult, right? Because um, you have to somehow find out where the opening of your uh, womb is, right? So again, what they say is to uh, you know to just again take your finger, you know, insert it into your vagina as far as it will go, right? And then you contract the vaginal muscles, right? And just start to feel your vaginal muscles deeper, as deep as they go, right? Um, and basically squeeze your finger, right? And you contract up a, beyond the tip of your finger even, basically, right? And then eventually, at some point, you'll find the... Uh, and just try to see just beyond the tip of your finger where the womb is, right? And try to concentrate in that area and contract the muscles in that area, the cervix, actually, right? So the first practice is... Um, again, it's different for men and women, right? Because now you want to breathe, you want to imagine the breath is flowing in and out of the Muladhara Chakra, right? So again, all of the, everything is done in Siddhasana, so uh, again, sit in Siddhasana if you can. So uh, again, for men, you press the heel against the perineum, right, to give pressure on that point where you're going to contract the muscle, so to help you to concentrate on that point. For women, it's either uh, you know, in front of the vagina or actually you know, inside the vagina, again, as we explain the proper clothing to uh, allow you to, uh, to do that in the beginner course. Um, so, so for men, I'll read the description quickly for men and for women, right? So you focus, you focus your mind on the, the Muladhara Chakra, right? The perineum in men, cervix in women. Become aware of the breath, and imagine the breath is flowing in and out of this point, right? Imagine the breath is becoming very fine and like it's piercing the point, actually, kind of like a needle almost, it's like piercing in and out as you breathe in and out, right? And again, just do that for like about five minutes, right? Would be normal practice. For men, for women, because your heel is quite a ways away from your, the, the actual chakra point, you actually imagine the flow of breath is along the, 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 the vagina, right? So from the cervix, along the vagina to the heel, and then from the heel back up. Uh, through the vagina to the cervix, right? So you just flow the breath up and down in that region, right? And eventually the chakra will awaken and you'll actually feel it. So then once you feel it, then you know where it is, right? So the trick is to actually know where the chakra is, right? So the main thing, again, to do all the Kundalini Kriyas, you just have to know, the main thing is you have to know where exactly the chakra is so you can take your mind there easily, right? And that's about it. So you can practice that for like, uh, you know, just maybe uh, one minute or so. Just imagine the breath is flowing out of the chakra. Right.
Okay. Yeah. So in this practice, you don't actually uh, you don't contract it. So you just relax the muscles for this practice. Relax the muscles and just focus on the breathing. Okay. So again, you do that for just about five minutes. There's actually several practices here. So the next practice is um, actually contracting the muscles now, right? Combining that with breath retention. And actually, uh, Jal and Haraband as well, right? Um, so again, this is something we'll add to Nadi Shodhana uh, next month. But for now, uh, you just practice it kind of in isolation. So for the second practice, what you do is uh, you just, uh, you know, in Siddhasana, uh, you inhale fully as much as you can. You then contract, um, you know, the muscles that you kind of like discovered, you, you know, the vaginal muscles or the perineal muscles. Contract them, pull them in and up as much as you can. And, uh, and you hold that with Jala Dharban, you hold your breath at the same time. You kind of hold your breath, the contraction of those muscles for like, you know, 30 seconds, around, you know, 20 to 30 seconds basically. And then, and then you release. Breathe normally for a bit. And then again, inhale deeply, hold your breath, Jaladhar Band, Mula Band, and hold it again for about 20 30 seconds. Right? So we'll try that once. So just uh, inhale, inhale fully, hold it, and then contract. Jaladhar Band, so neck lock, and then Mula Band. Apply the two locks and hold your breath. We'll do 30 seconds this time. And relax. So again, uh, should do that about uh, again about for about five minutes, you know, four or five times or so, right? Um, so the next one is doing contractions one per second, right? So now you contract, either synchronize with your heartbeat if you're aware of your heartbeat, you synchronize with every beat of the heart, you just contract, relax, contract, relax, right? Or you just count seconds basically. You contract, relax, very rhythmic, a rhythmic contraction, relaxing, right? So let's uh, we can try that one for about a minute, All right? So now you're just going to contract, relax, contract, relax in, in a rhythmic fashion, okay? So again, it, uh, again, do that for about five minutes. Uh, what you'll find is that uh, after you've done all these practices, about five minutes each, right? You'll actually find that uh, 
the chakra is actually starting to throb at this point, right? You can actually feel it now, right? Without doing anything. So, uh, so basically, like the, the pulse will start to throb in that point, right? So the next practice is actually to now, you know, stop all physical contractions and just kind of focus on the on the throbbing, right? So now you basically try to like just mentally contract it. So don't have any, uh, you know, just focus on the throbbing essentially, right? To, and just mentally kind of like, um, you know, imagine it's, imagine the throbbing. If you don't actually feel the throbbing, just imagine it. Contraction, relaxation, contraction, relaxation. But don't do anything physically, right? So you do that for like another minute or so. Just just focus on it. Right? See if you can feel the the throbbing. So the, uh, so the final practice for a Muladhara Chakra is uh, uh, Nasikara Dristi, or uh, Aguchari Mudra, I think it's called in this book. Uh, that's uh, gazing at the nose tip, right? Um, so again, it's uh, very simple. You just, you just stare at your, uh, your nose tip, right? You just try to stare as long as you can at your nose tip. Uh, again, ideally without blinking, but if you blink, you know, you just, uh, it's fine. And, uh, you know, and if your eyes get tired, you just relax them for a bit and then, and, and then do it again, right? And again, just, again, just five minutes or so of this as well. Um, at some point, you kind of start to, you know, just have your awareness, like, on the nose tip, and maybe feel the breath as well, you know, the, the breath in the nostrils, right? Feel the breath moving in and out through the nose. At the same time, become aware of the subtle sound the breath makes as it moves through the nasal passages. Right. Be aware of the nose tip, the movement of the breath, and the accompanying sound, and continue for about five minutes. So, uh, again, just for about you know, one or two minutes, we can uh, practice that. Again, also, uh, if you have trouble concentrating your nose, you can use your finger to. Uh, to bring your eyes to your nose tip, then move it away, and then just uh, stare at your nose tip and concentrate.
relax your eyes. You can actually do uh, palming after this one's good, right? So just rub your hands, heat your hands up a bit. And then just rest them on your eyes. So again, um, basically there, there is a spiritual link between the tip of the nose and Muladhara chakra directly. So again, this is a very easy way, because it's easy to concentrate on your nose tip, right? Uh, not so easy to perhaps find the Muladhara chakra, but then this will directly uh, awaken the chakra for you, right? Um, so again, the, uh, so one of the things you might notice is that, uh, you know, again, just like I was saying, it, uh, it's the seat of sexual desire, so any kind of... Uh, some scaras, vasanas associated with sexual desire might get awakened, and you might find your sexual desire kind of like fluctuates, it increases a lot, decreases a lot over the course of these practices. Um, but eventually you'll come to the point whereby you actually, uh, you know, eliminate sexual desire completely, right? Um, again, if you read Anastasius, he says that's the, um, the best way to conceive children actually is when you have no sexual desire, right? Then you'll conceive uh, enlightened children, in fact, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, so again, one thing you might want to try as well is, um, you know, uh, just to kind of uh, understand what happens during, um, you know, the, the sexual act, right? Uh, is just before, uh, you know, you know, um, you orgasm, just to apply muladhara band. Right? Do the contract the perineum or the muladhara band. Just, just before that, try to hold it through the entire. Act. To, to, to the orgasm and see what, see what effect you feel. <laughs> That's your, uh, another one of your homework assignments, you can try it out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's it for, uh, for Mula Band and uh, Mula Dara Chakra. Uh, I mean, we'll meet uh, March 13th, after the second Saturday of the month, for the next chakra. Uh, any, uh, any questions? Okay, so that's uh, that's it for today. See you. See you then.